What's going on, Packer fans? Happy Tuesday. Welcome into the Pack-A-Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Great show lined up for you today. I want to go over some of the off-season additions that Brian Gutekunst and Aaron Rodgers made this past off-season and how they played this past week. Go over some injury news and notes, a couple questions that have been asked of me recently. We'll get to all of that. Before I jump in, I want to give you a very quick explanation of what I view this video and, and podcast, whatever you want to call it, to be. A couple people have said, you know, well, Andy, you're, you know, you're so negative and, and things like that. I promise you, I am as optimistic as I can possibly be. I am a Packers fan through and through. I, my very first game was at Lambeau Field, Brett Favre, Kittrick Taylor. I've grown up in Green Bay. I am so much of a Packers fan that I grew up, you know, basically started a 365 day a year video and audio podcast. I have season tickets. I have worked my way into a position where I get to cover the Packers 365 days a year, all because the Packers are super passionate for me. But that doesn't mean that everything is rose tinted glasses and everything is positive. And there are plenty of videos and podcasts out there where you can get a ton of positivity and everything is glass half full every single day of the year. And that's not me ripping on them. I love that stuff, right? That there's, there's a place and a time for all of that. But what this is always going to be is realistic. And I'm not going to always get everything a million percent right. Not, not even close, right? but I can promise you everything is going to be well thought out. Everything is going to be analyzed. Everything's going to be broken down. I'm going to put the time, the effort, and energy in, and I'm going to give you what I believe to be the most realistic view possible. And that's why I have people on like Peter Bukowski and Ben Fennell and all different you know viewpoints, and we can have discussions like that. And I'm going to give you, again, from my, my thoughts and analysis and my heart, what I think is really going on with this team. It's not going to be your Stephen A. Smith, Colin Cowherd, you know, screaming about stuff just for the sake of screaming about stuff. It's going to be stuff that I'm I'm passionate about and that I really feel. And as Ben Fennell and I always talk about, it's it's going to be as even keeled as possible. When things are looking phenomenal and Green Bay's won three in a row, I can promise you there's some things that have not gone according to plan these past few weeks, whether it's blocked field goal attempts, whether it's been injuries to Jair and Z, uh, whether it's been the lack of overall pass rush up front. Those are still some things that are relatively concerning for this Green Bay team through four weeks. I can also give you a ton of positives. And even when they were 0-1 and the sky was falling and everyone was panicking, there's plenty of positives to still give you about this team. And that's where I'm always shooting for. Never too high, never too low, and always as realistic as possible. Am I ever going to attain perfection with that? I certainly am not. Uh, but I'm going to give it to you as straight as can be and as forthright as can be and as passionate as can be. So that's me. If that's not your cup of tea, that's cool. Like I said, there's so much oxygen here in the Packers pace for everyone. And if that's not your particular cup of tea, that is totally fine. But again, that is who I am. That's who I'm going to be. I'm not going to be anyone else. I'm not going to be yelling for the sake of yelling. I'm not going to be positive for the sake of being positive. I'm just going to be as realistic as possible. And I hope you join me for this ride with me. Almost hitting, what, three, what, 400 episodes? I don't know where we're at, but whatever the case may be, uh, I appreciate you joining me. Let's get into the actual conversation conversation today now that that's out of the way. Green Bay made very few veteran additions this offseason and they decided to go Kevin King, Preston Smith, Dean Lowry, Aaron Jones, bringing back a huge chunk of their own players and decided to go that route rather than maybe nuking some of the roster and trying to add a few different pieces to this mix. So they were very limited in the resources that they had to bring in outside veterans. This was not a situation where they could go out and get a Z and a Preston and a Billy Turner and an Adrian Amos all in one off season. You know, even last year, you know, they spent a little bit more money, Christian Kirksey, they brought in Devin Funchess. You know, they, they made a few moves like that, um, that at least, you know, kind of moved the needle a little bit. This year, it was not that much, right? They, they just didn't have the, the resources to spend. And in fact, they basically let all of free agency go by without doing anything. They do eventually pick up Devondre Campbell. And this was sort of a, you know, well past end of free agency sort of move, kind of not scrap heap. He still gets a $2 million deal, not exactly like a, um, you know, vet minimum sort of thing, but really bottom of the barrel, not much left free agent signing, right? As, as, you know, everyone had basically signed by that point. Campbell was one of the, the few players left remaining that would still get free agent deals. Brian Gutekunst brings in Devondre Campbell. 
then of course, you know, the, the trade for Randall Cobb, which was basically a concession to Aaron Rodgers at that point. He trades for Corey Bajorquez prior to the start of the season. Dennis Kelly gets added in there. Isaac Yadam gets traded for Josh Jackson. Kelly, just a depth piece at this point. But I actually, let me just talk about that for a really quick second. Speaking of Ben Fennel, Ben Fennel and I, in years past, have always talked about how you can't just go into the season without veteran depth along your offensive line. And to be fair, Green Bay hasn't used that veteran depth this year when they've needed the depth. They've used their younger guys, but we have seen Green Bay get in trouble with unproven players having to step in. Kyle Murphy is a great example of that. Jason Spriggs, you know, just to name a couple of them, you know, Alex Light a couple years ago. And not having a veteran to step up step up is is not an excuse for underperforming. And Dennis Kelly may never be needed this season, but having a guy that's played a thousand snaps in this league as your what like ninth or tenth offensive lineman could really pay dividends at some point. We'll see. Hopefully it doesn't get to that point where, you know, all of these guys are hurt to the point where Dennis Kelly needs to come in. But, you know, right now they they're, you know, next tackle up is is easily Dennis Kelly uh, at this point. Um, you still have Lucas Patrick on the bench. So you have some of these players, but the fact that they're already having to go to Yash Nijman and, and John Runyon Jr. And, and those sort of things, and they still have Lucas Patrick and Dennis Kelly on the bench, Elton Jenkins and David Bakhtiari coming back at some point, just goes to show you how much they valued their depth. That's a that's not the story I was trying to tell here, but it's still, I feel like, very important. It just shows how Brian Gutekunst views the importance of depth along the offensive line. Isaac Yadam was basically a change of scenery trade, but I thought I feel like Yadam's actually been a pretty good player on special teams so far. Filled in a little at corner, not the greatest results, but he's not here, frankly, to play corner. He is here to play special teams right now. But I want to talk primarily about the three other guys, Randall Cobb, Devondre Campbell, and Corey Bohorquez, because this past week, those three players were massive. And overall so far, Bohorquez and Campbell have been phenomenal pickups for Brian Gutekunst. And Randall Cobb, certainly this past week, shows that he is still very capable of being an impact player in this league. We talked yesterday about just how important Randall Cobb was on third down. He has the two touchdowns. He has that synergy with Aaron Rodgers. They're consistently on the same page. They know what each other are going to do, save for maybe the pass that Randall Cobb tries to one hand and sort of intercept from Devontae Adams this past game. But you can just tell having another veteran in the slot that Rodgers has trust in, that he knows where he's going to be, that knows how to work angles, all of that stuff is super valuable to this team still. So that was a very major addition. At the time, it seemed odd, right? You had all these wide receivers. Devin Funches was still on the roster. It, you know, Jawan Winfrey was the talk of, of minicamp and OTAs at that point. Like you had probably eight guys deep. Well, you know, EQ ends up not making the roster. Funches doesn't make the roster or any other team. Winfrey gets hurt. And all of a sudden, and, and now MVS is hurt. And all of a sudden, Randall Cobb is right back in the thick of things. And this looks like a very valuable player to have on this roster at this very moment. You don't have to look further than this past week to see that. Devondre Campbell, my goodness. And I talked about this when Campbell was first signed. When you look, when, when, if you're looking at like for, with, uh, at Devondre Campbell with scouts' eyes, you're beaming. You are absolutely beaming. Tall, fast, physical, sideline to sideline, the ability to take on blocks up front, the ability to drop into coverage, sound tackler. Like it looks amazing. It looks absolutely amazing. Yet when you go and watch his tape in Atlanta, in Arizona, it left so much to be desired. There's a reason why this guy who is super tall or, you know, tall for his position, good size for his position, I guess I should say, super athletic, can take on blocks, physical, was there after the entirety of free agency was over for a one-year, $2 million deal. That's nothing in today's day and age. There's a reason he was there because the tape he put on you know, on film the last two years or the last five years, whatever, it was not great for Campbell. The the consistency was not there. Even though he's a, you know, a good tackler, the, he was an inconsistent tackler. He, his drops and coverage were not what you wanted them to be. His run fits were, again, inconsistent. It just left so much to be desired. And all the, and, and at what point do uh, does a player in what is sixth year in the league, all of a sudden, just like the, the light bulb goes off? 
Devondre Campbell mentioned that this is the first time at linebacker that he's really been the Batman at the position. He said he's always been the Robin. Now he's the Batman. This is the first defense that's allowed him to do that. Well, apparently that was the missing ingredient for Devondre Campbell. And I'm not saying that Devondre Campbell's out there playing at like an all pro level. He's certainly not, but he has been a big time game changer for that defense. A big step up from Christian Kirksey a season ago, a huge steal at $2 million on a one-year deal. And this just is you know, perfect example of what Brian Gutekunst is capable of doing by finding these players late in free agency. This was a huge home run swing for Green Bay at that cost. And his ability to, to really kind of make things work in the middle of the field is one of the best things going right now. In fact, I, I, you know, I haven't finished grades obviously for this week yet, but the inside linebacker group is one of the few groups defensively that's grading in the positive. And that is partially, you know, a little bit of Chris Barnes, a little bit of Oren Burks, but it's a big part of Devondre Campbell. And he has solidified that linebacker group. And that was such a huge signing for Green Bay. You, you sort of shudder to think right now, you know, this is what Ty Summers and Oren Burks last week, if it's, if, if uh, you know, Campbell's not there. So man, what a phenomenal free agent signing. Great on Brian Gutekunst and great on Devondre Campbell for continuing to work, continue to, you know, kind of go through some of those struggles the last few seasons and still find his way and have a breakout season in year six in the NFL. Doesn't happen often, but it's happening right now in front of our eyes with Devondre Campbell. And then my goodness, the curse of Craig Hentrick seems to finally be over. If That might be dating myself a little bit there, but Craig Hendrick, you know, Packers didn't resign him. He moves to Tennessee and Green Bay has basically struggled to find a good, consistent punter ever since. Hendrick went on to have a, a great remainder of his career in Tennessee. And now Corey Bohorquez seems to be the final solution to the Packers punters, you know, punter problem he has been nothing short of fantastic. His punt from the end zone this past week was unbelievable. He's got directional punting. He, he has the ability to pin the ball down inside the 20 yard line and have it bounce backwards like a you know golfer getting a backspin on it. He hasn't had a touchback. Like it is, it is, it is something to behold when you haven't had a punter for three decades, basically all of this, at least 25 years like all of a sudden you have a good punter again and it matters. It really, really matters. I thought Bohorquez was fantastic this last game and really has been since coming to Green Bay. I know giving up draft picks for punters isn't ideal and you'd like to use those draft picks towards players, you know, that could, you know, eventually, you know, look at Donald Driver's a seventh round pick, right? Tom Brady, you know, there's a list goes on and on where you don't know where these players are going to hit from. But is anyone upset right now that Green Bay gave up a draft pick for Corey Bohorquez? Because I certainly am not. And I, th it was just a phenomenal trade at the end and a massive upgrade from the inconsistencies of J.K. Scott. Not much to work with, right? Not a lot of money to spend, not a lot of draft capital to trade away. They still get a depth piece in Dennis Kelly, a special teams guy in Isaac Yadam, Randall Cobb at wide receiver with a hat tip to Aaron Rodgers on that one, Devondre Campbell, a game changer right now for Green Bay at inside linebacker, and Corey Bohorquez, a field swip, a switcher, flipper, whatever you want to call it, at punter. Not much money to work with, not many resources, still big time results, especially this past week. Uh, against the Pittsburgh Steelers. A couple injury updates. Not that this is unexpected, but Matt LaFleur did confirm that Z is going to be out a while. They are not giving up on him this season yet, but he is going to be out a while, which is exactly what we've expected up until this point. They're getting a second opinion on Jair Alexander, which doesn't sound great. AC joint you know, sprains or whatever can have like three different grades. I'm not a doctor. I'm not even going to pretend to be, uh, but the severity of that will depend on if it's a short-term injury, a medium, you know, out for a while, but still coming back this year or done for the year. Breath is held, fingers are crossed, toes are crossed that Jair Alexander is okay. Obviously from a Homer Packers standpoint, but just from an NFL standpoint, right? You don't want to see players like Jair Alexander get hurt. He's just too special of a player. The, these are the type of players that you want to see every Sunday and hopefully he's okay and able to come back this season, especially when you're in an all-in last dance sort of year. Jair is the type of guy you need on your team. And again, every appendage is crossed at this point uh, to hope that he is back sooner rather than later. 
Speaking of injuries, Elton Jenkins and Kevin King, Matt LaFleur did mention that he's hopeful to get both of them back, although he did mention that neither of them would have practiced on Monday if they had practiced on Monday. So hopefully both are back this week, but sounds like they both still have work to do to get back from injury. Matt LaFleur also mentioned that Billy Turner was his highest graded offensive lineman this week. So that is, you know, a, a step in the positive uh, direction for Billy Turner, who I think has had a really nice season so far, very consistent. And this week going up against TJ Watt, uh, Eric Armstead the week before, he's had some tough matchups and he's held up really nice. That deal for, for Billy Turner has turned out really, really nice for Green Bay. You look at his contract next year, it's trending in the direction that he'll be back even for another year. Uh, four years of that Billy Turner contract when he first signed it, I did not think was feasible. Looks like he's going to get through four years, and he's certainly earned it up until this point. Last but not least, I've received some questions lately. Will Green Bay add a corner or outside linebacker to help replace potentially Jair or certainly Zadarius? I think Brian Gudikins is going to be as active as possible. As I mentioned the other day, there's just not much resources left to go out and get a player. I do think he probably will add an outside linebacker at some point that maybe can be a player, but don't expect a big name. I'm not even going to throw out names because it's it's probably ridiculous to even uh, hypothesize at this point, but I do think he's going to be active in that market. We'll see at corner dependent upon what happens with Jair. I think he's for the time being going to feel okay with King and Sullivan and Stokes, even though I know that doesn't sound the best. I think he's going to feel at least confident in that if Jair's out maybe a month, somewhere around there. Uh, but I do think he's going to be active in trying to upgrade that outside linebacker position. I think he knows that if something happens to Preston or Gary, he's going to be really behind the eight ball. And it's just probably a bit too much pressure on Preston, Gary, and Kenny Clark up front right now. So if he can add anyone along the defensive line or outside linebacker that can add some pass rush prowess, I think he will try to do that. Um, just unfortunately, he doesn't have a ton of resources to go out and get that type of player. And he's going to have to be creative. So do I think something make it might get done at some point? I do, maybe around the trade deadline. Maybe it's just a free agent. We'll see, but don't expect a big, big name. It'll be somebody probably on the bargain bin that they're hoping maybe can come to Green Bay and, and they can maybe revitalize or whatever the case may be. That's going to do it for me today. Always appreciate your questions. I'll try to get to those a little bit more often. I'll be right back here tomorrow with Rachel Hotmeyer, so make sure to check that out. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.